They say horsepower wins races, but every hull physics secret every boat owner should know proves the real speed comes from below. One unseen curve can make you fly, another can drag you under. The truth? Your hull writes the story. Let's start with the one thing that defines how every boat rides hull shape. Think of it as the boat's personality. A flat bottom hull is like a skateboard, fast to plane, light on power, but a nightmare in chop. A deep V hull, on the other hand, slices through waves like a samurai sword, but it demands more horsepower and burns more fuel doing it. Somewhere in between lives the semi V, the compromise most manufacturers love because it keeps weekend boaters happy without emptying their wallets. Here's where it gets fascinating. That little number called dead rise, the V angle between the keel and chine, controls almost everything about ride, comfort and drag. More dead rise means softer landings and smoother runs offshore. Less dead rise means more lift, more speed and better efficiency in calm water. The trick is knowing what you really need. And remember, two boats can both claim a 20 degree dead rise and perform completely differently. Why? Because one carries that V the entire length of the hull, while another flattens out midship for lift. So when you're comparing hulls, don't just look at the brochure number. Look at the whole shape. It's the difference between a boat that skips waves and one that crushes them flat. Physics doesn't lie. Marketing sometimes does. And if you're liking this so far, please make sure to subscribe. The next points would really define your boating journey in the future. Every hull lives in one of two worlds, displacement or planing. Understanding which world your boat belongs to is like knowing whether you're driving a dump truck or a sports car. A displacement hull moves through water, constantly pushing it aside. It's smooth, stable, and predictable, but it's limited by physics, specifically its hull speed, which equals about 1.34 times the square root of the waterline length in feet. That's why trawlers and sailboats rarely break double digits. Planing hulls, on the other hand, are all about lift. Once you hit a certain speed, the hull climbs on top of the water, drastically reducing drag. Suddenly, it's not pushing water, it's skimming over it. That's where the magic happens. The engine relaxes, speed jumps, and fuel efficiency skyrockets. But here's the catch. To stay on plane, your hull needs just the right mix of lift, angle, and power. Watching a boat transition onto plane is like watching physics in motion. The bow rises, the stern digs in, then boom, the hull levels out, and everything smooths out. That's not horsepower doing the work. It's hydrodynamics. So before you blame your engine for being underpowered, ask yourself, is your hull still trying to be a barge when it should be acting like a bird? Every boater loves to brag about their 24 degree dead rise, like it's a secret handshake for offshore legends. But here's the twist. That number only tells part of the story. Dead rise is measured at the transom, and it changes along the hull. Two boats can both claim 24 degrees, yet ride completely differently because of how that angle evolves from bow to stern. See, more dead rise means a sharper V shape, which slices waves beautifully but also increases drag at slower speeds. Less dead rise means your hull rides flatter, giving you better lift and fuel economy, but a much rougher time in chop. It's like the difference between a luxury sedan and a go-kart. Both get you there, but one will rattle your fillings loose. The real trick is in how that dead rise transitions. Some hulls carry the deep V farther forward, giving you comfort offshore. Others flatten midship to pop onto plane faster. And then there are stepped hulls, those clever designs that use multiple angles to reboot the water flow and reduce drag. They can add serious speed if designed right, or handle like a rodeo bull if not. So next time you're boat shopping, 
Don't just ask for the dead rise number, ask where it's measured. Because numbers might impress your buddies, but water always tells the truth. Now let's talk about one of the most underrated parts of your hull, the chine. It's that sharp line where the bottom meets the side, and while it looks simple, it's quietly running the show. The chine determines how much lift, stability and spray control your hull produces. Think of it as the hull's edge of personality. Wide, flat chines create tons of lift and make a boat feel stable at rest. They're perfect for speed and efficiency in calm water, which is why bay boats and flats boats love them. But the trade-off? They can slap in rough seas and throw spray sideways like a fire hose. Rounded or tucked in Chinese, on the other hand, give you a softer, quieter ride, but less lift and more roll. Here's a little experiment. Next time you make a turn, feel what happens. If your boat grips smoothly and banks with confidence, your Chinese and strakes are working together like synchronized swimmers. If it skips, bounces or throws spray over the bow, your Chinese are shouting for help. One of the easiest upgrades during a hull refit is sharpening worn or rounded chiney edges. Even a few millimeters can improve lift and tracking. It's Hydrodynamics 101. When you tame water flow, you tame chaos. Let's talk about the part of your hull you can't see when you're running, the wetted surface. That's every square inch of hull that's actually touching water at speed. And here's the kicker. It's stealing more of your speed than your prop ever could. The larger your wetted surface area, the more drag your boat creates. It's basic physics. More surface equals more friction. That's why race boats have sharp entries, narrow beams, and lifting strakes. They're all trying to minimize how much hull actually sits in the water. Less contact equals less resistance, which equals more speed and efficiency. Here's something wild. A hull covered in marine growth can lose up to 30% of its top speed. A little slime might not seem like much, but at the microscopic level, it disrupts laminar flow, turning your hull into a sandpapered nightmare. So yes, cleaning and waxing your bottom isn't just cosmetic, it's free horsepower. Lift-enhancing features like strakes and steps also play a massive role here. They generate mini air pockets that break water adhesion, reducing drag without sacrificing stability. Every inch your hull lifts out of the water is a win for your wallet and your speedometer. So if your boat feels sluggish, don't blame your engine first. Blame the part of it still hiding underwater. Your boat's center of gravity is like its mood. Get it wrong, and nothing feels right. It decides how easily your hull planes, how it rides in waves, and even how much fuel you burn. Yet most owners have no idea where theirs actually sits. Here's the physics. When your center of gravity shifts too far aft, your bow points skyward, and your stern drags, forcing the engine to work harder. Shift it too far forward, and you plow through water instead of gliding over it. The sweet spot is slightly aft of the center of buoyancy. That's where the hull rides level, planing effortlessly and carving turns like it's on rails. Now, what messes this up? Everything you load, batteries, coolers, anchors, fuel, even passengers. I once saw a 22-footer that couldn't get on plane, no matter how hard it was throttled. We moved 200 pounds of gear forward by six feet. Problem solved. It jumped onto plane like a startled dolphin. So before you curse your prop, check your packing habits. You might be running a perfectly tuned hull, just trimmed like a seesaw. Small changes in weight placement can mean big differences in speed, handling and comfort. Proof that even physics enjoys a well-balanced diet. Everyone loves to say, lighter is faster, but in boating, that's only half true. The material your hull is made of, fiberglass, aluminum, carbon fiber, even wood, 
changes how your boat interacts with the water. And sometimes a little extra weight is exactly what you want. Light hulls, like aluminum or thin fiberglass, jump onto plane faster and sip fuel. But they can also feel twitchy and chop. They tend to slap, rattle, and bounce like a beach ball in rough water. Heavier hulls, on the other hand, slice through waves with momentum and authority. The trade-off? You'll need more power to push them, but the ride feels solid and predictable. Here's where it gets really interesting. Stiffness matters more than sheer weight. A flexible hull wastes energy bending and flexing with every wave instead of transferring that energy forward. That's why builders go wild with foam cores, stringers, and vacuum infusion. They're chasing rigidity. A stiffer hull equals less vibration, less fatigue, and better efficiency. Ever heard that hollow boom underfoot when hitting waves? That's your hull flexing, and that sound is physics begging for more reinforcement. So next time you compare boats, don't just tap the hull for thickness. Ask how it's built. Because in the war between strength and lightness, the smartest hulls find balance, not extremes. Here's a number almost nobody talks about, planing angle. It's the quiet metric that decides whether your boat skims gracefully or plows like a stubborn mule. Most hulls perform best when running at around three to five degrees of trim relative to the water. Too high and you're lifting your bow like a parade float, wasting power. Too low and you're dragging your transom, churning water instead of slicing it. Think of it like holding a surfboard. Tilt it just right and it glides. Angle it wrong and it digs in. That same principle applies to your hull. The planing angle is affected by trim tabs, engine trim, crew position, and even how full your fuel tank is. Everything shifts that delicate balance. Get it right and you'll feel it instantly. The boat suddenly feels lighter, quieter, and faster. Get it wrong and you'll hear the engine work harder without gaining speed. The wake changes too. A clean, low rooster tail means you're in the sweet spot. Want a quick trick? Run your boat at cruising speed, then tap the trim up one click at a time until speed peaks without bow lift. That's your perfect planing angle. Pure, measurable physics that costs nothing and rewards everything. If you've ever watched your bow bounce up and down like it's on a trampoline, congratulations, you've met porpoising. It's one of the most common and most embarrassing hull issues out there. Every captain's been there, usually pretending it's just the waves. Spoiler, it's not. Porpoising happens when your boat's center of lift moves too far aft of its center of gravity. The bow rises, the hull loses lift, it drops, then the process repeats. The result? That awkward, rhythmic hopping that looks funny until you realize it's murdering your fuel economy and shaking your fillings loose. The fix is almost always balance. Shift some weight forward, batteries, gear, passengers, and the motion often disappears instantly. If that's not enough, trim your engine down slightly or install smart tabs to help maintain lift. Sometimes even raising your engine height a hole or two can make all the difference. And yes, everyone blames the hull, but 90% of the time, it's operator error. Over-trimming, uneven load, or sloppy setup turns good boats into kangaroos. Once you learn to tame it, though, that moment your hull locks in and rides flat across the water feels glorious, like you just made peace with the laws of physics. Here's a performance upgrade that costs less than a tank of fuel keeping your hull clean. Most people underestimate how much a dirty bottom slows a boat down. Even a thin film of slime creates microscopic turbulence that disrupts smooth water flow, turning your sleek hull into a sandpapered anchor. Physics says drag increases with the square of speed. So if your boat is 20% dirtier, you're not losing 20% of your efficiency you're losing nearly double. 
I've seen identical hulls, same engines, same props. The only difference was maintenance. The clean hull gained 4 miles per hour and burned 10% less fuel. That's not myth. That's measurable science. A smooth hull reduces friction, lifts onto plane faster, and tracks straighter. Waxing adds a hydrophobic layer that makes water bead off instead of clinging. And while bottom paint is essential for saltwater boats, over time it can build up rough layers, so sanding and reapplying properly every few seasons keeps performance crisp. Next time you're tempted to chase more speed with props or power, grab a brush instead. A weekend of cleaning can do more for performance than a thousand dollar upgrade. Because in boating, the simplest secret of hull physics still holds true. Nothing cuts through water faster than clean. You don't need more horsepower or a new prop, just the knowledge hiding beneath your hull. Every curve, chine and angle tells a story of lift, drag and balance. Master these secrets and you won't just drive your boat, you'll command it. If this video opened your eyes, hit subscribe, tap the bell and drop a comment about your hull type. I read everyone. Your next speed boost might just come from science, not spending.